Welcome back to Nigeria 2015. We're taking a look at the profile and the candidates of some of the states where governorship and state houses of assemblies elections are going on. In many cases, have been concluded and results being collated as we speak. Let's go to Akwai Bom State now. We've spoken about uh, previously getting comments from those who participated. Uh, gentlemen, look at this state now. They've got about 1.5 million number of expected voters. Uh, 31 local government areas is what they are going to be battling for. Let's switch and see some of the leading political candidates, the, the candidates who are uh, seeking for the vote. Again, two major ones here, uh, that uh, Udom Imano and uh, Umana Okon. Quickly, just quickly, and then rather, I'm sorry if I, I think dismissively. You had an election, two leading candidates. One has come out to say, I didn't vote. There is no election. The godfather of the other, who is the outgoing governor, said, oh, the election was so peaceful and beautiful. Save few skirmishes and all that. So what are you going to see? You're going to have a situation whereby if the election is not cancelled, as slide. The last slide. Really? really? And then thereafter, there will be. But an election, the pattern of the be an election, election petition. also. Uh -uh. You don't forget that the incumbent governor won his senatorial election to uh, the National Assembly. And then virtually the uh, PDP won landslide in a quiet bond. A whopping you know, 1.2 million. You know, that, so that has been the traditional is, ground, uh, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Two major things that uh, makes a quiet bomb stand out uh, with this election. The PDP won it um, during the presidential, and a quiet bomb has always been PDP since yeah. 1999. Um, those are two dangerous trends that the opposition um, will most likely put their hands on their head, literally on. Um, they look PDP won um, two weeks ago. The PDP has always governed in a quiet bomb state. Let's flip to Benway. Well, Benway, the last election was shocking. The I think the, 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 the Benway thing is that the people are making a statement. Because even before the election came, the civil servant said, we want to teach the governor a lesson. For close to one year, he refused to pay teacher salary. You know? And then a lot of um, taking people for granted were going on in that state. And then you don't forget that the original chairman of PDP, uh, Chief Banambas Gemadi, has now ported to APC. And a lot of things are working in favor of the opposition in Benin. So I'll not be surprised that the APC will snatch victory. And that's so the Senate the president. The uh... governor himself lost the election to go to the Senate as an incumbent governor. So if he could not secure uh, his own um, electoral feature, how could he do for his own successor? Well, there's another state that has been for Benin, What also makes it quickly general is there's one key thing that's happened in Benin. Look at the general. In all, all his um, previous elections, he had never won in Benue State. In 2015, the APC, the general won in Benue State. And that is something that will make them happy as they conclude and they start counting elections in Benue State. Delta State also, as you mentioned, uh, is a state that's been ruled basically by the PDP in PDP, the past. PDP. Do you see any change, any, any shift in there that's uh, the two? Uh, contendants for for uh, 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 for Benue to for Delta, to Delta let's now. To let's Delta. flip to Delta now. They've got what about 1.9 million yes. people were expected to come up and vote. The wind of change didn't blow Delta. To they Delta. stood firm. So I, I also I just want to imagine that you're going to have a replication. And then uh, you know that uh, Dr. Uh, Otega, okay. you know, could not reconcile with uh, Oboru in terms of the two of them trying to work together to challenge the uh, ruling party. So once they went to that election separated, they were going to snatch the votes between themselves and get PDP to um, walk away with victory. So three leading candidates in Delta State there seeking to uh, get the nod of the people. Let's go to Ebony State. They've got 12 local governments, about 848,000 uh, registered voters there. Traditionally, GDOI has, this has always also gone to the PDP, but this time the dynamics look to be a little different. We heard from the uh, Labour Party, he spoke about these elections, but then they also have the PDP in Ebony State, they've got the SDP in Ebony State, and uh, other parties too striving to get the votes. Yes, but with um, Eboy, um, 1999, you had um, Sam Ego, he did two terms. Um, you then had uh, Martin Zelechi, um, he's also currently the oldest um, serving governor in the country at the moment. He's also concluding his two terms. Um, the PDP as well, during the presidential election, they won Eboy State. Um, so you clearly see three dangerous things um, that 
the opposition would need to have changed today for them to have won. The first is they lost um, the, the PDP won during the presidential elections. Um, in 1999, um, the PDP won, and they also won in 2003. And thirdly, in 2007, the PDP also won as well, and they won in 2011. So whoever wants to kick out the PDP in a Boeing state will need to do a whole lot of work. For instance, now, the governor, assuming he's the one, because he's got the, he's accused of supporting the Labour Party candidate against the candidate of, of the PDP in a Boeing state. And people think that, who knows, if the tables will turn on this one. Because remember, they tried to impeach him. That didn't work out. And now they're going into elections because PDP won the governorship elections in that state. So you think the same thing will happen for this one? Um, it, it's hard to um, predict. I don't know um, what GT's opinion will be. Um, but what makes um, Ebony even more special for me is because um, they chose in 2011 to elect Martins Elechi. This has nothing to do with his credibility, but Martins Elechi, as at 2011, was 70 years old. He was then the oldest governor among all other governors um, in the country. Um, and I, for, for me, I um, took special interest in Ebony. We don't know what will happen, um, what has happened um, at the moment, but looking again purely at historicals, two weeks ago there was a presidential election they won. 1999, 2003, governorship election, the PDP won. 2007, 2011, governorship election in Ebony State, PDP won. Um, opposition will have to do something remarkably different for the PDP to lose Ebony State. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, interesting. So uh, yeah. we move on to Imo State. Imo State, where we are recording uh, one million seven hundred and seven uh, thousand six hundred and fifty-eight. Uh, just as you can see, uh, just across the board there, Imo State bringing up to seventy-four point uh, seven uh, ninety-four, rather that, ninety-four point seven zero percent of the collection. Yeah, Imo State. We'll see whether Imo State uh, can be sustained by the APC governor as an island of difference in a notion of political alignment in that region. In the south-south uh, and southeast, we're talking about the dominance of the PDP. And now, uh, yes, the governor is uh, coming from Abga. Okay, Papa uh, we'll come back and then just take a look at him and wrap it up properly. But we've got... Uh, uh, the PDP governorship candidate in uh, Aquaibom State. He joins us via phone. Good evening and thank you for joining us today. Well, speaking about uh, this elections, there's been complaints from the APC candidates and many others that elections did not hold in Aquaibom State. What's your assessment? Did elections hold? But first and foremost, could you turn down the volume of your TV sets? Because it looks as if it's howling back at us before you respond. Okay, then go ahead.